hey kids, I just want to welcome you this morning to MRBC Kids Online Church. And whether you're sitting at home in your pajamas or whether you're here with us under the tent, let's go ahead and get started. So put your headphones on. Let's sing, let's praise the Lord, and let's learn from God's Word. It's going to be a great week. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to this week's installment of Kids Quarantine Olympics. I'm your host, Pastor Taylor, and this gentleman here beside me has lost his touch and is in a three-week losing streak, my favorite competitor to be Mr. Scott Holmes. Mr. Holmes, how are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks for that introduction. Okay, no problem. And speaking of today, do you know what today is? Sunday? I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. I have no idea yeah, what day it is. I don't know what day it is either. Yeah. But, but anyways, today is an anniversary for the ages. It is a milestone that we'll never forget. Today is the one week anniversary of last week, of me coming back and tying up the score, tying up that tally, evening the playing field, taking it back to zero to zero in the kids quarantine competition Olympics. Uh, you, you keep on saying the points don't matter, but it seems like they matter more and more every week. Well, you know, I've, I've been actually, I've been giving that a lot of thought, and I think that we should do something interesting. Oh, yeah? What would you have in mind? Well, hear me out. Okay. I think that what we should do is at the end of the Kids Quarantine Olympics, because after this week we only have three weeks left, okay. but at the end, whoever has the least amount of points okay. would receive a special... Prize. Oh, prize. Unwanted consequences. An, un an unwanted consequence, if you will. Yes, I got that. Definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. What do you think we should do? Ooh. I hadn't thought that far ahead. Okay, all right. That's fine. But let's let's put that on the back burner. Let's get to today's competition, then we'll revisit that, and we'll come up with what we're going right. to do as our special prize. All right. Okay? What, are we, what are we doing today? All right. Today's game is going to be called Keep It Up. Have you ever played that before? Uh Probably not. Okay, well, yeah. keep it up is involving three balloons per person. And what happens is we're going to have these three balloons, and we have to keep them all up in the air all at the same time. And the first person to have a balloon touch the ground is the loser. Okay. But I want to give you the best chance possible. We're going to do the best out of three. Are you all right with that? Um, yeah, I could use the chance this Okay, all right, best out of three. So let's see who it is that we're going to be playing for this week. Okay, you ready? Let's do it. All right, the envelope, please. Thank you, ma'am. 
All right, Scott, you are going to be playing for Miss Annika Blessing. Okay. And right. I myself will be playing for Mr. Bradley Ball. All so. Right. You guys, you've got a good you got a good chance of winning, 50-50 chance. It's either going to be Annika or it's going to be Bradley who's going to be the winner. So let's see who it's going to be. Are you ready? Let's do it. been another great day here on the Kids Quarantine Olympics. Uh, Mr. Holmes, are you okay? Okay. All right. Well, you know what? This puts you one step closer to the prize. And you know what, kids? I'm excited that you could join us this week. We only have three weeks left of exciting competition here on the Kids Quarantine Olympics. So congratulations to Bradley Ball, and we will see you next time here on the Kids Quarantine Olympics. Oh, wait. Hold on. I forgot. Look at this trophy. <laughs> it's a beaut. It says champion, winner, that's me with a balloon. Do you see it, Mr. Holmes? <laughs> All right, kids, see you next time. What do you believe in? You believe I can catch a ball because you just saw me do it. You believe your dog is shedding his winter coat because you can see all the fur that your dad makes you clean up. You believe the floor is solid because you haven't fallen through it yet. Some people say seeing is believing, but faith says use what you can see to believe in what you can't see. You can't see the wind, but on those wild stormy evenings, you can see what it does. You can't see what's happening inside your stomach without an x-ray machine, but you believe that this can be fixed by this. You can't see your parents' love, but you can see the way your mom cuts your sandwich just the way you like it. And how dad drives you to soccer four times a week. And no, you can't see God with your physical eyes, but you can see him in everything he's created. You can see his love in the kid who's kind to you on the bus and the drive through lady who smiles and gives you extra fries. Most of all, you can see who God is in Jesus and the eyewitness accounts written down by his best friends. When you trust, even when it's hard to see, when you live a life based on faith in who God is and how he tells us to love, others can see God at work in you. That's why faith is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. I'm so excited is because I have developed my very own steam lab. Look at it, check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. Look at, look at, wow. Isn't that so awesome? You're probably wondering what that stands for. Science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. <laughs> and 
I'm not totally sure how things will go in my lab this summer, but luckily, I have faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. You see? You see what I did there? <laughs> I have faith that I'll learn a lot and probably have fun doing so. I mean, just look at this place! Check it out. Whoa! Oh, wait. Perfect. Check out this microscope! Microscope, 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 microscope! I've always been amazed how microscopes can let you see things that you normally can't see. Take care, for instance. Ow. Ah, look at that one. See, it looks like a thin line. Mine's kind of curly. You can't see it, can you? Ah. But put it under a microscope. Whoa! Cool, right? What about the inside of a piece of grass? Put it under a microscope. Whoa! Look at that! The inside looks like a whole bunch of smiley face emojis. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, you never see that just by looking at grass. Today's Bible story is all about not being able to see everything, but remembering that God always does. It's like he's always looking through a microscope or something. So let's take a look at this story and see what we can find. <laughs> Unbelievable! Is that really what my hair looks like? Yeah. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Hebrews, chapters 11 and 12. Gotta have a little faith, 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 faith. Keep the faith. Take a leap of faith. You know, a lot of people toss around the word faith lately. We say you can break the faith or just take it all on blind faith. But true faith isn't blind at all. It's much more than just an inspirational word. True faith has to do with believing in all the things you can't see because you start with what you can see. Now, we can't see God with our physical eyes, but we can see the stories of people who came before us. Um, they lived in a broken world like we do, but they chose to follow God. They chose to trust his promise that one day he would send a rescuer that would make everything right again. The writer of uh, Hebrews in the New Testament tells us about some of these men and women in God's story. People like Noah, people like Abraham. Abraham. When God called Abraham, he was already getting old. He and his wife Sarah didn't have kids. Leave your country and your people. Leave your father's family. Go to the land I will show you. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. God was planning on sending his rescuer as one of Abraham's great, 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 etc. grandchildren. But still, even though Abraham had God's promise, he still couldn't see the one God was sending. Still, Abraham went on a wild adventure following God's call. And even his descendants, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, all chose faith in God. Moses, too, was called by God from the fiery heart of a burning bush. Even though he was raised by Pharaoh's daughter, he chose to stand with his own people and face Pharaoh's anger to win freedom. We read about it like this in the book of Hebrews. Moses suffered shame because of Christ. He thought it of great value. See, when you check out Hebrews, you discover this huge list of people who followed God by faith, so many that the writer just stops trying to list all of them. Oh, but we can't forget Israel's most important king, David. Get up and anoint him. This is the one. Even though God had promised David would be king though, David spent years on the run from King Saul fearing for his life. Still, he chose to trust God. The Lord is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. Now, none of these people in the Old Testament could see with their eyes how God was going to save his people, but they could see 
how he was working in their lives, how their needs were being met. So they chose to believe in his greater plan. They chose faith. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. That is what the people of long ago were praised for. Now, here's where the story turns. In Hebrews, we discover that none of those people in the Old Testament received what God had promised here on earth. That's because God had planned something better for us. So they would only be made perfect together with us. God's plan includes all of us from the very beginning of creation. So at just the right moment, at the perfect point in time, God sent his rescuer, the hero, his very own son, Jesus. Jesus showed us how to live. He showed us what God was like, and he told us the most important thing. If you love one another, everyone will know you are my disciples. Love God, love others. It's the heart of the whole story. But then, Jesus was killed, and his friends thought the story was finished. Period. Dot. The end. Until God raised him back to life. Jesus has defeated death, and those who follow him can live with him forever. But how do you follow someone you can't see? Well, that brings us back to faith. Let us keep looking to Jesus. He is the one who started this journey of faith, and he is the one who completes this journey of faith. He paid no attention to the shame of the cross. He suffered there because of the joy he was looking forward to. So think about him. Then you won't lose hope. The early believers, Peter and John and other followers of Jesus, had seen him teach and heal. They saw him after God raised him to life. But after Jesus returned to heaven, the believers continued to live by faith. We have to speak about the things we've seen and heard. Because of what the new Christians in the early church had seen, they could believe in what they could not yet see, the end of the story, where God makes everything right. They kept the faith, and because they did, we can choose faith too. Guesses on what that is? It's the inside of a carnation stim. It's amazing how things look so different under a microscope than they do just with our eyes. It makes me think of Hebrews chapter 11. It's where we can look back to all these people in history who had faith in God. Even though they couldn't always see how things would turn out, they believed God and his promises. They lived by faith. And you can live by faith too. In fact, having faith in Jesus and what he did for you on the cross is what makes it possible for you to have a relationship with God. Relationship status update. Even though we can't see Jesus in person, we can still have faith in him because we can see how he's worked in the lives of the people who've come before us. That's the one thing to remember today you can know Jesus even though you've never seen him. If you want to know Jesus more and you don't know where to start, try talking with someone who has put their faith in Jesus. Or you can read the stories in the Bible of the people who trusted God long ago. There are lots of things we can see that can help us have faith. So I hope you guys have an awesome day. I'm going to look at a few more things under my microscope. Like maybe my nail. Ah, let's check it out. Oh, oh, I need to wash my hands better. Hmm, this microscope tells you a lot. <laughs>
Hey kids, thank you so much for joining us today here on MRBC Kids Online Church. I hope you've had a good time, but more importantly, I hope you've learned something from God's Word. And remember, if you have any questions at all, just ask your parents. They'd be more than happy to answer those questions for you. So until next week, we'll see you right here on MRBC Kids Church Online.